So I've wanted to be in technology since I was four years old. What I've loved about it is the element of problem solving and also of creativity. Um, Age four, I typed up the story of Little Red Riding Hood on my dad's computer and saved it and came back and it was still there, my story, how I'd written it in exactly the way that I'd put it down. And for me, that was fascinating. That was my story to share with the world. Um, and that's what I've always loved about technology. And that's what still, uh, I still enjoy in technology, being able to create things, being able to solve problems for others to be able to partake in that. So I've been uh, in technology now kind of full time for three and a half years. Um, and what I still enjoy about it is the problem solving, but also the element of being able to, to change people's lives. And um, particularly in my work, it's about changing lives at the workplace. So we're changing the way that people work. Um, and so it's quite interesting because it's about the technology, but it's also about people. Um, and so a lot of the, the kind of challenges or things that we face, even within my current role, is trying to convince people about the technology, but not just the technology, but their processes mm -hmm. around it, and also trying to change mindsets. So a lot of the time, you know, you're dealing with, with new systems and they're used to having new systems, um, but you know, trying to make, convince them to make the switch from using one system to another, mm -hmm. or to make the switch in terms of the processes that they're making, especially if they're not IT people. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of a bigger, you know, push, a bigger change for you to say, actually, I'd rather you tweeted that you're in this email rather than just having it locked away in your inbox. So for me, the biggest challenges in my career so far have, has not really been the technology. It's been more of the people that I'm working with um, and the way that they approach how they work. I think more women should consider a career in IT because we need them. <laughs> First off, there's not enough people in, we need more women in, there's not enough women in there. Um, but also because it's a, it's a great industry to be in, it's very cutting edge, it's where the future is, it's what's happening. So as a woman, you definitely want to be shaping the lives that your children, that your daughters, your nieces, your nephews, the generations after you are going to be in. But also as a woman, it's a, very, it's a great industry in terms of flexi working and being a space that you can work as a woman, that you can bring your whole self to work and that your perspective and your, um, your strengths are going to be are needed and are going to be uh, celebrated. So it's definitely somewhere to be where you can be very collaborative in the way you work and, and uh, technology is a very collaborative industry. You can be yourself, you know, we are looking for you. Sometimes you are the, the target customer, for example. Sometimes you're the only person who knows the nuance of, you know, whatever system it is that we're running, but also women have certain skills and perspectives that they can bring to technology that technology has been missing really. Mm -hmm. um, I often give, when I'm talking to girls, give the examples of certain technologies that didn't actually take off until women were part of their design. Mm -hmm. So things like voice recognition which was around decades ago um, but which didn't really take off until they used women voices as part of the modulation and, and part of the setup of the system. Yeah. Or seatbelts is the other example I always give that were initially developed for the height and weight of men and so killed the initial women and children that, that wore seatbelts. Um, and an example we've just been hearing earlier today around you know, console games and, and uh, controllers and the fact that the first batch made by whichever company it was weren't built to fit the, the hands of women and so they didn't have any women gamers on this one platform until everyone else then did it and caught up with them and superseded them because they'd reached this market. So women are the, are the solution as well. So we need you women in technology. I think a lot of it does have to do with stereotypes and perspectives and what people assume a career in technology is like. Um, I don't. I think it's also the influences that you have. So I work with young girls, in particular, kind of before they've started work, maybe just pre-university or at university, and with them it is a lot about this is what the job is actually going to be like. It's not all you know in the dark typing away at computers. It's not the kind of job where you're going to be you know catcalled all day. Um, and sometimes it's even uh, convincing their parents as well to say, you know, your daughter won't become a freak if she works in IT. You know, she can have a very fulfilling life like all these other women who also work in IT, but are great women, they're great leaders, they're great mothers, they're great people. Um, and sometimes there's a bit of a disconnect between what women in IT or what people in IT really are like and what we have this kind of uh, public perception of. I think that the biggest thing, there's a lot of actions that can be done, but I think the biggest thing is the message around what the industry is all about. And I take that back to my initial thing of it's about being creative and it's about problem solving. It's not necessarily even about the technology, it's about what we're able to do with that technology and who we're able to help. And I think sometimes we get caught up in it being, you know, you have to be a genius or you have to be a geek or you have to be a certain type of person. It's not about that. You need to be someone that can see a problem and maybe think around certain solutions. So I think once we change the messaging on what technology is actually about and we, we stay away from these kind of stereotypes and playing them up in the media or at schools or within society, um, I think once we've done that, then we'll be able to, to do that. But in, in addition, I think 
the, there are certain um, key points in a girl's life or in a woman's life where there are decisions that she can make about going down the technical route or not going down the technical route. And we do need to have a lot more, uh, a lot more support around those decisions, but also support post those decisions. So once a girl has chosen to do computer science or physics or maths or any of the other subjects that do event that could eventually lead into a computing mm -hmm. subject, we do need to have a little bit more support around these are the, the decisions that you can make. Here's how to stick with it. Here's why to stick with it. And here's what will happen. Um, I think the last thing to also point out as well, you know, if we are going to go purely commercial, I know money isn't really a, a driver for this kind of thing, but you know, the pay gap is virtually non-existent in the first two years um, between girls and, and boys when they're starting technology careers. After then it does open up, but of course you've got two years gained on everybody else who's gone into every other industry and is already significantly behind the guys in that industry. So come in, come and join in, go for it. Uh, have no inhibitions, uh, attend a couple of hacks, get involved, get stuck in. It's a really great collaborative community. People are very welcoming and people appreciate, you know, you wanting to do it rather than being forced into it. So if, you, if you're interested, get on it.